First of all, I would thank uh, Tamo Fisher and the uh, European Society of uh, Emergency Medicine to this invitation. I'm an emergency uh, physician in uh, Dijon University Hospital. So, as introduction, about 10% uh, of patients presented to the emergency department with chest pain, but only 10% of these patients have an acute coronary syndrome. So, the diagnosis of uh, uh, acute coronary syndrome, according to the European Society of Cardiology, is based on the history, electrocardiogram, and cardiac troponin. But the problem with troponin is, uh, is uh, that can be lead to 6 to 10 uh, to 11 hours observation on emergency department that can be create an overcrowding and high costs. So the problem is uh, for to early out of emergency uh, acute coronary syndrome is uh, real for emergency physician. So uh, about 10% patient, uh, according to the observation, have STME and 10% NSTME and 14 patients have unstable angina. So for a study uh, performed by French Society of Emergency Medicine concerning 614 patients, uh, well, there is the observation found 9.8% having an acute coronary syndrome. So the, chief, the chest pain is, his pain is the most chief complaint for acute coronary syndrome, and the working diagnosis is the working is the, is the diagnosis rollout of NST acute coronary syndrome. So uh, that's the lack of persistent ST elevation, and troponin further uh, distinguish between NST and unstable angina. So the challenge for an uh, emergency physician is to roll out the acute coronary syndrome rapidly and safely. Rapidly because the ischemia time is correlated positively with the infarct size. Rapidly also because can be relief ED over crowning. And crowding is, uh, of emergency department is correlated positively with the number of errors per day safely to avoid acute myocardial infection mistakenly discharged from emergency department, Pop, in his observation, found 2.1% patient and with acute coronary syndrome and 2.3% with unstable angina. And the risk-adjusted ratio of mortality was 1.9 for the patient with acute myocardial infection and 1.7 with a patient uh, with, uh, having an unstable angina. Lee, in his observation, found 4% per, 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 patients mistakenly discharged from emergency department. So, how to detect an acute coronary syndrome? The history, but we found Gupta in 2002 found there is only 53% patients having acute coronary syndrome had presented to the emergency department with chest pain. The other signs, the other complaints were the shortness of, the, of uh, breath, uh, abdominal pain, and diseases, weakness, syncope. Electrocardiogram, but one, two, three persons with normal electrocardiogram have a diagnosis, a final diagnosis of acute myocardial infection. And 4 to 21 percent have, with no specific abnormalities, electrocardiogram have a diagnosis, final, a final diagnosis, acute myocardial infection. Troponin is a good cardiac marker, but when we admitted, uh, when uh, uh, when for the patient admitted within four hours, the, uh, the area under curve rock was only 0 0.78. And the second problem for troponin is the various conditions false positive. Troponin false positive. Hypersensitive troponin is commonly used in our department emergency, 
But the problem is the lack of consensus to determine the delta changes of hypersensitive troponin to roll out an acute, an acute coronary syndrome. If the guidelines, the guidelines states that a dynamic change is, is requested to determine an acute coronary syndrome, but the magnitude of this change is not provided. Another problem is the difficulty to compare various hypersensitive troponin. So what's the solution? Uh, perhaps, probably, is the combination between a cardiac marker, that's the troponin with delayed release, and the copeptin, endogenous, endogenous uh, marker. So, Uchlin have found there is inverse correlation between the copeptin levels and uh, the time since one set of symptoms, whereas troponin increases slowly with the, with the, uh, is correlated positively with the time since one set of symptoms. And the accuracy diagnosis provided by troponin at the, at the first presentation in patients with acute myocardial infection as quantified by the area under, uh, under the curve, where, where 0.78. So the combination of troponin and copeptin provided the diagnostic accuracy provided by troponin alone with area under curve 0.897. Well, he used uh, uh, a cutoff for 15, uh, 14 picomol per liter. We found negative predictive value 99.7 and uh, sensitivity 98.8%. Keller found the same observation. So, level troponin, uh, level troponin decreased slowly within the three, six hours after presentation, whereas the, co the copeptin levels decrease within six hours from its peak at presentation. Maisel, in 2013, he found a new, a new negative predictive value 99.2% and only positive predictive value 13.6%. When the copeptin levels decrease slowly from, uh, from the, uh, with, uh, with increasing the time after one set symptoms, the level troponin uh, rose with a peak at 18 hours, and the both markers, median value for of the both markers for the patient without acute coronary syndrome stays flat. So, outcome is all cause mortality is defined uh, for troponin by the 99th percentile and for copeptin by the third quarter. The survival uh, estimates have 99.5% for the patient if the, if the, below, if the both the copeptin and uh, troponin were below the cutoff, and only 90.5% if the below copeptin and troponin levels uh, for, uh, above the cutoff. So, B8 is, is the first study used using tropo, uh, copeptin in real in routine. B8 concerned all patients with suspected acute coronary syndrome and initially troponin negative. Patients were, were assignedly, randomly assigned to copeptin group or standard group. In standard group, in standard group, patients were managed like uh, according to the guidelines for management of acute coronary syndrome. In the copeptin group, the formal diagnosis uh, management depended of copeptin value. If copeptin positive, patients were managed like a standard group, and if copeptin were negative, 
patient can be discharged from emergency department. And the only point where the, for, for the proportion of MACE, major adverse cardiac events, within 30 and 90 days. There is equal number of MACE between two groups. And from intention treat to treat analysis, or in per protocol analysis, the non-inferiority inferiority margin was not exceeded by 99 by one-sided confident interval 97.5 percent, and in in coperting group, 80.7 patients were discharged from emergency department, as opposed for only 11.6 percent for standard in the standard group. In 14 patients. Copeptin negative with maize, 12 uh, were not discharged, is, were admitted despite their copeptin negative, and only two were discharged. So, what about the copeptin's experience in Dijon? So, what a presentation of our emergency department 42,000 patients yearly, 9,000 for chest pain, and 25 to 330 acute coronary syndrome per month. 30 to 40 troponin measurement every day, 3 to 4 copeptin measurement every day. So one first study was performed to validate the use of copeptin in our emergency department. It that concerned all the patient prospective study observation, concerned all the patients presenting with chest pain within six hours of one cent symptoms. And the major result we found is no patient having second measurement of troponin neg negative, uh, positive when they have troponin, first, firstly troponin and copeptin negative. 44 patients have troponin negative, copeptin negative. Three, only three admitted in cardiology department, this according to the, the risk factors and now cardiovascular events for the 44 patients within 30 days. So we have new negative predictive value, 1,000 percent. And a long stay in emergency department is different significative between troponin, or when we use troponin, only troponin, and when we use troponin and copeptin. The second study, it's a retrospective observational study over three months. It concerned all the patients with chest pain. The same inclusion criteria than the first study. So, of the patient, we have chest pain, ECG in 10 minutes, and measurement of troponin and copeptin initially. When the troponin was positive, patient was managed like an acute coronary syndrome. When the troponin negative, that the management is dependent to the copeptin result. When the copeptin negative patient can be discharged from emergency department, and when the troponin was positive, a second measurement of, tropon of uh, troponin is requested. So we had found 75.3 patients having chest pain and only 6.3 having acute coronary syndrome. And uh, 164 patients have troponin and negative, copeptin negative. 134 were discharged from emergency department and for cardiovascular events. And only the patients, uh, the, for the patients having the cardi cardiovascular events were admitted in the cardiology department. No patients were discharged from emergency department with Cardio, cardio, have, have had cardiovascular event. So long stay in the emergency department, there is a difference significant between the two groups. 272 minutes for the patient having troponin and copeptin negative, and 362 minutes for the patient having copeptin positive, troponin negative. So as conclusion, copeptin improves the early diagnosis of acute myocardial infection. And the use of copeptin conjunction with troponin, ECG, and clinical findings 
can be obviate the need for prolonged stay in half impatience, as observed in our study, so can be lead to medical and economic benefits. So, last slide is algorithm suggested by Mr. Mackel, Dr. Mackel, and uh, we, which is used in our department, emergency department, that concerns only the patient having low or to intermediate risk to have uh, with suspected acute coronary syndrome. So, clinical evaluation, ECG, combined troponin and copeptin. When the troponin is negative and copeptin is negative, patient can be discharged after clinical, final clinical assessment, excluding discharge. If, if, if the clinical, uh, clinical assessment excluding discharge, patient was managed like a standard car. So, but the, the most important thing is a follow-up cardiology appointment in 72 hours is, is recommended for the, all the patients you were discharged from emergency department. Thank you for your attention.